Hello artists, it's Chris here with Artist Palette Durham Region and I want to say welcome to the video premiere of Playful Octopus in pen and watercolor and I've done something a bit unique and I've painted it on sheet music today. So we'll go through the supplies and then we'll get to painting. Now this is a video premiere, so I'm not actually live today. I'm actually away on a bit of a holiday, but you're still able to pause, rewind, play back anything that you missed, hit pause when you want to take a bit more time on the step that you're currently on. And of course you can um, message us any questions you have and we'll get back to you. Um, but this video will be available forever. So you can maybe just watch it today and then paint on a different day or do half of it today. All right, so there he is, playful octopus. I'm so excited. So supplies is first. Um, we need some kind of paper. So it doesn't have to be the sheet music. I just thought it would add uh, a playful quality to it. Um, so I'll show you what I use. I went to my local thrift store. I found this book, Favorite Songs of the 90s, which when I read the title, I was like, ooh, that's so interesting. They mean the 1890s? As I looked at the titles, I'm like, this isn't the 90s. This is the 1890s. It's so funny. Um, what I did was I cut, I cut the spine off the book. I just sliced off the whole spine. So I've got a, a binder clip binding it all together now. And I just flip through and pick some cool sheet music whenever I feel like painting on some sheet music. My gal Sal, what a classic. Mother was a lady. <laughs> classic songs. The Moth and the Flame. Oh, pff, classic. Me, me and St. Louis. So let us choose maybe something with not too many notes on it. Um, oh, that's kind of cute. If I were on the stage, let's choose that page today. That's a good one. You could do this on any kind of paper that you want. Um, watercolor paper would work best because we're using watercolors. Oops, almost got myself. Um, but I'm just going to do this on just this sheet music paper. It's going to get a little bit warped. I'm going to try not to overwork it too much because I know it's a thin paper. And um, yeah, watercolor paper would work excellently. Maybe mixed media paper would be good for you. So that's paper. Um, I have some watercolors here with a little my little swatch card so I know what the colors look like. I'll do some extra mixing in the lid right here. I've got my, my jar of water for the watercolors. I've got my little paper towel to dry my brushes. I'm literally just going to use one brush today. Just one, one brush. I could do this whole painting with just one brush. And this is the brush I'm using. Just kind of thinnish. Not too thick, not too thin. And some pens. So we're going to draw our octopus. We'll first draw it with the pencil and then some kind of waterproof pen. So I've got a couple of brands here to show you. Um, these, I think these are the most popular. Pigma Micron Pens by Secura. Um, they have, you know, a number of sizes, number of sizes you can get. These are great. These are waterproof, nice and thin, nice black ink. Um, I also have a few other examples. So here is a, a Sharpie. Here's a couple of Sharpies. Sharpie brand Ultra Fine Point, if it focuses, focus. Sharpie pen. Max is saying hi. Um, I have also, oh, I have one more. A Stettler Permanent Ultra Fine Point Stettler. It needs to be waterproof because we're doing the pen work first and then we're gonna add the paint later. So that's why it needs to be a permanent pen or a waterproof pen. Okay, let's move the paint aside for a sec. 
Here's our example. I didn't mount that on a piece of black paper. I think it looks really sharp against the black. All right, an octopus. So it might be, I wonder if the magic, the magic, the music notes will interfere with um, you seeing my drawing. I'm going to start with where I want to put the eye, the eye of the octopus. Maybe I'll put it here so you can like see it in this blank space here. So just a, a circle a circle with another circle around it. And you don't have to worry about it being a perfect circle, it being perfectly circular, it could be slightly oval. My style is kind of messy. If you've been following me for a little bit, if you look real close, all of the lines, every line is messy. Double lines, triple lines. So whatever you do with the pencil, doesn't matter. We're going to add messy lines with the pen afterwards. The pupil of the octopus is like a little bow tie, actually. Picture a little bow tie, like two triangles put together. Um, maybe like a sideways hourglass. That's, they have weird pupils but I bet they have excellent vision. So that's our octopus's like eye that's facing us. Let's give them a big old noggin, like a big cone head. Take up a lot of the room over here. We want a big, big old head. It could be a little bit pointy over here. It could be rounded. I'm gonna bring it around this way almost egg shape and use up a lot of this room here. Can you see it? The musical notes are a little distracting. Big old noggin and I have messy lines. Here's a line I started. Didn't like that. I went over here. Big old noggin. Look at that. Okay. He has a bit of a, hmm, a flappy. Maybe this is like a like an ear flap kind of thing. I'll just do a little flappy shape. So here's a little, we can picture it's kind of like near his ear, a little flappy shape. And a little siphon tube of some kind is coming out of that. So a little tube shape. Coming out of that. It's tough with the with the lines, the notes. There's a little siphon tube, a little flappy shape. Okay, uh, let's go back to like this kind of area by his eye. So he's got an eye here, and um, I wouldn't call this his nose area, but you know, if he were to have a nose in this area, come bring this forward a little bit. A little lumpy there. If he were to have a nose, it'd be kind of here. And then there's a second eye, the eye that's facing away from us. We just see part of it, part of it. And then around this eye, maybe a bit of a, um, like even a third circle around this, but not, not complete. I just kind of do some of the circle here, some of the circle above, like, like bags under his eyes. Give him a baggy under eye. What does this remind me of? Zoidberg, if you know what I mean. All right, so that is like the very basics of our octopus. And the legs can go any direction, anywhere, any amount of curves and curls and twists. Everyone's octopus legs are gonna be completely different. I do have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all different lengths, thicknesses, but just make sure you have eight in there. So coming from kind of this region, coming down and out and around, this octopus here is going to end up being different than this octopus. Yours at home 
will be completely different. And that's what I want. I want to see uniqueness. I want to see your personality, your art style. We don't need exact carbon copies. All right, so keep that in mind. You don't have to do the exact same twists and turns that I'm doing. So here I'm going to, I'm going to twist one up this way. And maybe it just curls in like this. So as it gets closer and closer to the like tip, the tip of the tentacle, thinner and thinner, right? But as it gets closer to the octopus um, face, body, thicker. So here's, here's one. I just curled it right up like that versus here's this one. It goes like this and then it kind of zigs and zags anything you want to do literally let's have let's have two coming out here look at all this beautiful area this negative space beautiful let's have something going on up here any direction any amount of twists and turns just as long as it gets thinner at the tip thicker near the base here it is curling up any any direction here's he's got like a little tiny cutie um, what if I do it going this way a little bit use up a lot of the room that you have on your page don't be shy yes look at that twisty one this one's like a little teeny tiny one here's a nice twisty one Love it. One, two, three. We're almost halfway there with the tentacles. Okay, let's get another one going here. Um, I want something to head towards this corner. Look at all this beautiful space in this corner. Let's go that way. Which, do we want it to loop the loop? We can loop the loop. Something like that, and then thicken it up. So you have to decide which part of the loop is in front and which part is behind. So this could, this could go behind or it could go in front of this part. Up to you. Let's go, mine's gonna go in front. That part of the loop. Use your eraser, you can kind of erase any extra lines you don't need. It loops the loop. And my lines are all sketchy, they're messy. That's okay. We've got four already. We've already got four. I want one to kind of, this one kind of curls up this way, but I think I want it to curl up behind his head. So let's have one that just completely goes up behind his head. Maybe we don't even see the tip of that one. Maybe it just goes, it goes, goes back there. This one's just kind of looping up. It ends somewhere behind his head. Okay, I need like three more. And they could overlap each other. These don't have to be all literally separate from each other either. Let's have a biggie. I'll have a biggie coming down here. We gotta take up a lot of this room down here. a little baby loop baby loop the loop over here a little baby one but get right down into these corners stretch it out stretch it out in all directions I need two more so I'm gonna put one here kind of taking up this kind of area and they could be this one's kind of like tucked behind these two need one more so I have choices I could go I could go up here go down here choices choices I'm gonna go down here and I could go looping behind this guy a little bit and then maybe it 
comes and maybe it curls up this way. There we go, nice and tucked in there. It is, it is tough with the musical notes, and I apologize. On plain paper, would be much more visible. But really, anywhere, any amount of curls, any length, knotted together, intertwined together, what's a good angle? If you wanted to, say, pause your video on this screen and just work on some of your tendrils, your tentacles a little bit before you get into the pen work, do it. Pause it. Erase, adjust, relocate. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, one thing that, um, while I was promoting this image, this tutorial, I was mentioning something fun. We could add an instrument in one of his tentacles. What do you think? He's playing an instrument. He's playful. Get it? Um, so I was thinking like a trumpet could be, maybe he's got a violin in one tentacle and the bow in another tentacle. If you wanted to gift this to someone and they play an instrument, wouldn't it be funny if the octopus was holding that instrument? Saxophone, flute, clarinet, a cymbal, uh, tambourine. Wouldn't that be hysterical? You could put an instrument in every, every tentacle for fun. Wouldn't that be awesome? French horn. I'm going to add, what am I going to add? Where am I going to add it? Here or here? And he's going to be gripping it. I'm going to think about, I'm going to think about a trumpet, I think, right here. And you could reference on Google an image of, a, of an instrument if you're not sh quite sure how to just draw it from your mind. So a trumpet. And he's kind of gripping it around there. Um, they have like a mouthpiece back here. And then there's like a big loopy, loopy pipe tube. Oh, a tuba. Wouldn't that be awesome? So there's this loopy pipe here and um, those buttons that they press. So there's like, these straight bits that come down here. Um, I really should look at a reference photo, but that's kind of like the basics of a trumpet. <laughs> oh, don't get mad at me, trumpet players. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I like that. I'll just do one instrument, but think about multiple. Time for pen. If you're not quite ready for the pen work, just hit pause. Um, oh, I also have colored pens. Think about a colored pen. It doesn't have to be black. What if it's like a dark, dark, dark blue? There's a dark, dark, dark blue pen. Dark red would look amazing. I will go with the, with the black today. Black pen, messy. Messy, double lines, triple lines. Don't even worry about going outside your pencil lines. It is not a problem. So all of the pencil we just did, you're going to go around two, three times, four times, and look at, look how messy. And we're going to add even more scribbles for shading. There's that flappy, kind of like an ear flap. Here's that little siphon siphon tube. 
wonder what he uses it for. Breathing? Probably. Probably. And then all these beautiful tentacles. So um, we will add kind of like a suction cup feature to these tentacles. So um, like little ovals. You could call them like little ovals. So here I've got little ovals along the right side of this guy along here smaller at the tip bigger as you go along here I've just got some ovals on the kind of inside curve inside curve here inside here inside here we go right in here right in here everyone's gonna have their little suction cups in different areas Here's some on, along the inside, 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 along the bottom here, just peeking out. Sometimes they're just barely peeking out because maybe the, the tentacles are facing away from you. It's okay if some of your tentacles have zero suction cups on them. So let's take like this guy for an example. I'll start with some smaller ones up here and it could be a single row of little ovals or it could be a double row. We're not going for like super duper realism here, just the impression of suction cups. All right, there's a row, a single row, but sometimes I did a double row on some of my arms. Single row, of loose ovals, and then the other Part of his arm is just the smooth part of his arm. Tentacle. There we go, that's one tentacle. And we're gonna do it again. So maybe um, on this one, I'm picturing maybe up here that the suction cups are facing towards the trumpet. So maybe I don't see any there, but maybe I might see some peeking out down here. But that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm just going to do a little bit. There we go. Let me just add my little messy trumpet here. I do have some gold and some copper paint, so I might add that to my trumpet to give it a shine. Okay, there's my messy trumpet. Let me get some on the inside curve. I think that makes the most sense. If the suction ovals are on the inside, to me, to me that makes sense. And smaller by the tip, small teeny tiny ones. Here's where I might do like a double row of these ovals and I just kind of offset them a little bit so they're not like perfectly lined up like this. It's like boom, 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 boom. Offset ovals. There's a double row, not perfectly lined up. Messy lines. If you're having difficulty loosening up, making purposely messy lines, because it's not, you know, something you would naturally do. You want to normally try to make nice lines for art. If you're having trouble loosening, Hold your pen further back. Hold it back here. Because if you're holding your pen here, that's for precision, fine detail work. But if you purposely hold your pen looser, further back, it's going to get messier 
just because you have less control. You literally cannot grip it. It's going to be messy. Where am I going to put my suctions? i got to get some suctions in here. Take shape here. Okay, I've got this one curled around this one. This one's curling up. Suctions. Maybe this one doesn't have as many suctions because it's facing away. This one maybe right in this little corner. Just look at how how much of the space of the page I've taken up stretching it into all the corners that's important it's important for your composition to be balanced big bold don't be shy just have like this guy right here. I think I will do some along the bottom. It's a little easier to see my sketch now that it's darkened with the pen. Oh, that's looking great. Lots of movement. That's what we want. All right, so yeah, you can see all of my crazy double, triple, quadruple lines, sketchy, messy bits. Like, look at how many lines are there. And we're not quite done with the scribbling. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> we are going to add like even more lots more just scribble it up so i'm picturing um, maybe the the light in the ocean you know there's sunlight going through the ocean is coming from maybe this direction top left so the right side of things or the bottom side of things would be a little darker scribblier so picture his head extra scribbles along the right side and kind of curling under here so literal literal scribbles my pen is going in little zigzags little swirls little circles like just literally like make my hand just zoom around sometimes the pen even goes outside the lines whoops not a big deal see that outside the lines no one cares it's okay. So the more you scribble in one spot, the darker it becomes. So if you want like kind of lightish scribble, so this is like no scribble, bright light, medium scribble, 
getting darker and then intense scribble darkest boom we're also going to enhance the shading and the lighting with the paint itself so where else would it be kind of dark maybe tucked underneath this little siphon area put some scribbles in that little corner in that little nook this um, this tentacle kind of coming up behind his head maybe that's got some scribbles on it along the underside along the right side each tentacle so like oh in this little nook right in here right in here nice and dark extra scribbly maybe along here from a shadow maybe along this side right side scribble scribble I went outside the line again that's what I do this these two are overlapping each other so this one would definitely have some extra scribbliness this one too extra scribbly where they where they cross over each other you know like this maybe this one yeah right under this little nook right along this side you really can't go wrong here Ooh, right in here maybe this whole area would be a little darker everyone's is different you have to judge each of your own tentacles where would the dark side be where would the shadows be in the loops oh yeah underneath yeah so look at this i've done this kind of area this seems more popping than these these boring flat tentacles these are popping off the page a little bit more with just extra scribbles this is a style i use a lot it's just so forgiving and people think maybe you spent hours just doing all these perfect little scribbles but it's just your hands spazzing around right under here yeah even like on some of my sections I darken them get them a little scribbly um, yeah even like that far eyeball maybe it's a little scribblier darkness on my trumpet like this guy yep yeah. a little bit extra scribbly under the bags of his eyes they're baggy scribbly there yeah maybe on this little flappy a little bit a little ear flappy a little darker there <laughs> oh he's looking good right in there really darken some of these darks too darkest nooks and crannies extra scribble attention really darken it um, sometimes I like to like pick up my drawing my painting hold it like away from my body put it like far away arm's length and then judge you know do I have um, a balance of lights and darks is, is certain areas darker than others so I need to balance that out a little bit and even like throughout his body, like I might just add little, little squiggles, little lines, just really mess it up a little bit. Because they have like cool skin that transforms and changes and has texture and, and just helps him camouflage all these extra scribbles. Okay, 
Okay. Yeah, pleased with that. It's still not too late to maybe add something in his little tentacles. You could throw in a tambourine. That'd be funny. You could give him a, a top hat. Give him a little top hat. What about a little, a bow tie? <laughs> That'd be funny. Where would you put it? Uh, here? <laughs> All right, I'm happy with the amount of scribbles I have. Good. Um, if you have, let's say you have a lot of visible pencil lines still showing, you could take an eraser and just lightly erase um, any of those. I don't have too many, here's a little bit. Maybe the eye. But sometimes the pencil lines are nice to still see adds like a sketchiness to it. Where are some other little visible pencil lines? Get out of here. Mm, oh, right here. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything away if you do have a little bit of pencil lines still showing. No one's gonna fault you for that. Where's, oh, here's one. Besides, once we have all this uh, color and the splashes, all these splashes, no one's going to see those light little pencil lines. Lovely, wonderful. Okay, so um, watercolor time. If you're not quite ready, just pause. Just hit pause, pause on this screen, add even more scribbles. It's okay that it's taking a little longer for you because I do this a lot. My hand and my brain is kind of wired to, to just do it quickly but definitely take your time, fine tune it, perfect it. All right, watercolor time. Let's bring in these. I also have some metallics nearby. I have this set. This literally came from the dollar store, $2. Pretty good metallics. And I could do that on the, like the trumpet. So I might use some of those. I'm literally just gonna use one paintbrush today. Don't need anything fancy. It could be from the dollar store. And when we add the watercolors, I'm going to do it um, not maybe not as heavy as if I had actual watercolor paper because this is real thin paper. So we're not going to be doing a whole lot of like scrubbing our brush around because we wouldn't want the paper to tear or pill up. So I'll be kind of doing some blobby, blobby motions with my paintbrush instead of like stroking. We don't want the paper to rip. And in watercolor, we work light to dark, light to dark. So we'll do some light yellows, light oranges before we get into like the deep reds. We've got lots of deep, dark reds in there, a bit of purple. And then the very last step is the splashes. There's a lot of splashes in the background and some of them do land on the octopus itself as well, and that's fine. But the splash work isn't for everyone. You might not like the look. You don't have to do them. Um, also the colors, any colors. So I'm gonna do yellows into oranges into reds, warm colors. You could do beautiful um, teals, blues, purples, black, whole different set of colors. Just remember to work light to dark. All right, I get my brush wet. I'm going to add um, yellow, yellow first, like a light lemony, it could be cad yellow, lemon yellow. Um, I do some extra mixing in the lid. So you can bring some yellow over to the lid or a plate or a palette, add some extra water. Some lovely water there. Okay, so we're still picturing the light source is coming from the top left. 
So if that were the case, there would be some lovely light patches on the top of his head like this. And I'm just kind of lightly dabbing my brush around. I'm not, you know, really pressing hard. Just dabbing because I don't want it to rip. All along the top of his head, a little bit on his, what I called the nose. And there could be white gaps. There's lots of gaps in my painting. It's okay to have gappies. I do have some yellow in the, um, I guess that's his iris, because the black part's the pupil. Right around the black is the iris, so I'm putting yellow around that bow tie shape. Yellow eye. So that's his head, he's got a head highlight now, but then each of the tentacles would have light falling on them. So imagine the light is hitting this part of the tentacle, the top and left side of that tentacle. Same with this one, along the top edge, along the top edge here, just little dabs. And it's okay if these dabs go outside of your messy lines. Messy paint, messy lines. The top of this curve, dab, 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 lightly dabbing. Yeah, look at each tentacle and decide where, where would the light be falling. Dab, dab, dab. Maybe on that little siphon, a little yellow, maybe some yellow on that little ear flappy area. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe right along here. Maybe right on here. The left side of things, the top side of things, right in here. And it doesn't have to be every, every, every tentacle. Because some tentacles might be fully, fully in the shade. It's okay if a dab or two is in the wrong place. No one's gonna see that. Dab, 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 Ooh, maybe a little bit here. So just light dabs. I don't want my paper ripping up. Beautiful yellow. Yeah, that's a good amount. Again, maybe maybe sit back a little bit further away from your painting and see if it's balanced. Is there yellow throughout evenly as best you can that's pretty good uh, maybe i'll do a little on like the top um would that be like his eyelid or his brow who knows what that is okay i think i'm good on the yellow um so i'm gonna do like a lovely light orange you could do a green you could do a teal pink Ooh, pink octopus I'll do a lovely orange. What's a nice orange? Here's an orange. Mm, maybe this orange, maybe I'll blend my own orange. If you don't have quite the same color I do, invent it. Blend two colors together. Let's try it out. Well, that's nice, not too light, not too dark. That's pretty good. So. This orange, I'm putting it next to the yellow, I'm putting it near the yellow, I'm putting it on the yellow sometimes. But I don't wanna cover up all the beautiful yellows I just did. So this is like the, the mid-tone, medium tone. Again, little dabs, little strokes. I'm not rubbing it into the paper because my paper's thin. Um, yeah, definitely have some dabs on the yellow. It's gonna give you some great texture, having little dabs and dashes. And if some of your yellow 
is still wet and you've got some of this lovely orange near it, they'll, they'll touch each other, they'll blend into each other, they'll create a new color, they'll create new shapes and patterns, which are great. Get some under this bag of his eye. This is like the medium. We're not quite at the shadiest part of his head or the shadiest part of his uh, arms, his tentacles. Middle, we're in the middle, middle ground here. And you know, there's no wrong place to put it. Just dabbing it around. I am, uh, I am sort of avoiding the tentacles for the, or not the tentacles, the suction cups for the most part. We're gonna add some blue to those. But if some orange and yellow got on some of your suction cups, that's okay too. Yeah, so some of my orange is blending into the yellow. I kind of liked that idea of adding pink. Might wanna add some pink, we'll see. Yeah, we're getting kind of like a um, speckly look with all these little dabs and dots. Not, not everything has to be completely filled in. White gaps are okay. the white gaps kind of add even more texture. Orange, 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 orange. I'm still yeah, sort of avoiding the suction cups, but some of my suction cups have orange right on them. That's all right. Where else? A couple more dabs. He's already starting to come to life with texture. Okay. Orange, orange, orange. I think that's a good amount of orange for me. Looking good. Um, let's give the orange half a second to dry. I'm thinking I'm going to add some beautiful gold or copper to my trumpet, got these literally $2 at the dollar store. I got it at Dollarama. Um, da, 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 maybe this one? Yeah, they're really, they're really nice and thick metallic. I'm very surprised at the quality from a dollar store. Oh yeah, it is shiny. Shining in the light. But it's also shining because it's wet. That's cute. Okay, yes, yeah, some of my orange is drying. Some of it's dry. That's good. Okay, what would I like to do next? Um, let us, I'm gonna do the, the blue around the little suction cups. Maybe you didn't even notice right here. So I left kind of the middles of the suction cups white. So pretty much where I have the ovals, I just did a blue oval on top of that, leaving the middle white. So wherever you have your, your blue ovals, we're just gonna go over them in, in blue. If you have a thinner brush and you want to use a thinner brush for this step, do it. Kind of lightish blue, not too, not too dark. Not too dark, so a little watery. Okay, I'll put some purple in it. Meh. Because there's some purple here. What's this? This is more blue. And 
they don't have to be perfect. It's pretty subtle. Going around all my ovals. Messy blue. Let's let's have a closer look. Look at that. Not perfect. That's okay. And then let's say like you're in an area where it's truly messy and you don't even know what's going on. You could just invent invent it as you go. Just be like, oh here's an oval, here we go. Some of mine are thick, some are thin, some are dark, some are light. It's okay. Where is this one? This one's over here. Where is this one over here? Um, some of my yellow, some of my orange is still a little wet. I'm trying to avoid having the blue mix with those. So just go carefully. Don't let them touch. But if they are dry, you shouldn't have a problem. Yeah, just barely there, a little bit of blue. I think, yeah, that little blue accent is lovely with the, with the warm tones we have. <clears throat> I like the title of this, If I Were On The Stage. I suppose an octopus could go on a stage. All right, so we've got the blue tent, um, not tentacles, suction cups. Let's add some, I'm going to go with like a darker orange, and then we'll go red, then we'll go purple, like rich, rich, dark, dark purple that you can see like in little, like right in here, the absolute darkest little bits, like a rich purple. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got this like a lightish orange, now I'm going to go for more of like a reddish orange, um, this kind of what I'm going for here. or the color of your choice. A beautiful emerald green, if you're going for more blue-green idea. Oh yes, look at that. So um, yeah, this is darker than that. Let's say you only have one color of orange, just add a little red into your orange. Or you could add a little brown into your orange, just to make a different color. Under this bag of his eye, dab some in here. Still with the dabs, dabs and dashes. Think about what side is the dark side and add some of this darker orange to the darker side of him. But we're still gonna add some beautiful red, beautiful purple right in there. Dabs and dashes. Ooh, right in there. Overlapping, it would be darker. Mm 
It definitely does not have to be the whole tentacle, just the darkest part. Little freckles. Little speckles and freckles. Okay, I'm liking that. A couple speckles here and there on his head, his face. Speckle that up a little bit. With each step, we're getting closer and closer to those nice, rich darks that will really make this outstanding. Okay, dry half a minute here. What's his name? Ollie? Ollie the octopus? Oliver? Otto. Otto the octopus. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, there's some areas that are dry, some that are wet. I'm feeling pretty brave. I'm going to move on to like a rich, rich red. Think like a dark candy apple red, like a dark, dark red. If you don't have like a very dark, dark red, throw in a, a tiny bit of purple into a red, and deepen it. Um, let's try this one. or the color of your choice, remember? Any color. So let's try this nice rich, oh, that's rich. Gorgeous, so this is, again, on the, the darker side of him, far left. We will add some purple in here too in a moment, but we're, I'm getting right, right up to the edge here, right to the very edge of him. And I'm gonna be more sparing with this, just the absolute, darkest bits of him with this red. Don't cover up all the beautiful orange with some red. Just the, the very, you know, far curves, the inner, inner dark areas like it right in here. This little nook right in there. This little nook, all the darkest, darkest bits of him. For this part of the curve, like I guess if if he has an elbow, maybe that's it. In the little inner corners. But a lot more selective and sparing with where you're putting this red. And do some little speckles and freckles as you go along. Dab, 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 little speckles into the orange. There's some little speckles by his eye. Ooh, maybe right, right under the bag of his eye. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where else? I think I'm almost good with the red. Be very choosy where you're putting the red. Right in here. Mm -hmm. Little speckles. Yep, yep, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, okay. Yeah, some of the orange and some of the red is wet and are blending together, that's fine. Red. Gotta stop myself. And the last color I mentioned, purple. Um, rich, rich, nice, warm purple color. Just like the red, we're gonna be very choosy where we put this purple color. I've got a couple purples. Um, let's see what this one's like. It's like a purpley, purpley red. Nice and rich and dark. See what this one's like. I'll add it together. I'll make my own purple. Mix them together. There we go. Gorgeous. Be very choosy 
where you're putting this darkest dark color. So I'm going to go like right in here. Speckle, speckle, speckle. The absolute darkest nooks and crannies and corners. This is the color you'll have the least on here. Right in amongst some of those reds. Some speckles, some freckles of purple. It really just enhances the darkness of those red bits. Look at that. It looks almost black how dark it is. speckles here and there for texture. Yeah, give us a little freckles. Even on the yellow, that's fine. A little purple on the yellow is okay. Just the tiniest little dabs. I haven't gone back for paint in a long time. I'm just using whatever paint is left on my brush. You need some sleep, buddy. You got some real dark bags. Good. <laughs> That's cute. I love it. Now, along the way, if you had accidentally dripped some drips anywhere, because I have a little drippy here, that's okay. We're going to add some splashes now. Because if you've been painting with me for a while, you know I love to add splashes. So I've got, um, on this one, I've got purple and blue. Pretty light and kind of bigger blobs. But you don't have to do them at all. You could do less. You could do more different colors. Maybe just all blues for like the ocean or for bubbles. Um, red, yellow anything you like. And if you're looking at your octopus now and you're thinking, oh, a lot of my yellows got lost or they're not as um, bold as they were before, you can still go back in there. Throw in some more yellows or oranges or reds, whatever, whatever it's lacking. You could still go back in there and add more of it. or you know another color so we did one two three four five colors you want six colors you want seven colors go ahead so i'm adding a little more yellow to mine because i think some of that got lost with the hullabaloo of all the other colors let's put some back in there yellow. oh yeah that's that's bright that is bold. I am a bold color kind of person. High contrast, bold colors, every color, that's me. Yeah, I'm happy that that extra yellow just kind of zhuzhed it up. All right. Um, yeah, even if it's still a little wet, we can still splash. Let's splash. So move away anything that you don't want covered in paint. <laughs> Move the laptop. Get some very watery paint. Watery, watery paint. I'm going to go with um, blue. Blue to start. There's blue paint in my brush. Now we could tap our finger and little Little spray will come off, little bits. Boop, boop, boop. 
So it's like little light dots, mist almost. Um, but if you like a more bigger splash, so I'm going to hurl my brush towards the painting and then stop short like I'm flicking a magic wand. And you can sort of aim where it lands, but sort of not. It just goes where it wants to go. Here's some blue. I'm thinking I'm going to do maybe blue and green as kind of like an ocean thing. Blue and green. I don't have any green yet in this painting. And it's okay if some of this green even lands on, on him. I won't be upset. Oh yeah, I think that's giving it like kind of an ocean vibe. I'll do, I'll do some more green and some more blue. And you be the judge of how much is like the perfect amount. Cause maybe, maybe right there, that's maybe the perfect amount for you. But I'm going to do like, um, emerald color, viridian color. It's like a blue green. Oh, laundry's done. Can my, does my microphone pick up the, the sounds of the house? Definitely the cat earlier. Max was saying hello. The laundry is done sound. Oh yes. Oh, I love the teal. Teal's great. Um, what else could you add to this? More instruments. You could add musical notes. You could add other creatures, maybe a fish, maybe a seahorse, maybe a starfish. I'm going to sign mine. I'm going to sign mine in pen. It doesn't have to be signed in pen. You could do in the watercolors. Where will I tuck this in? I like hiding it sometimes. There is a little, little initial there. You could have like your whole signature. Um, you could frame this. You could mount this on black paper like I've done. Boop, like that. Isn't that fun? And then even like as it dries um, and it gets maybe a little bit lighter as it dries, you could still go in there and add some more colors, some more darker colors. All right. Um, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in for this video premiere. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love, 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 love to see your versions. Everyone's is going to be so different, so beautiful. I can't wait to see them. Go to our Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. I will put the link of that Facebook group in the description. In the description of this video will be a link to our Facebook group, Watercolor Lovers, a very positive, supportive, uplifting, uh, small community of watercolor lovers of, of all skill levels from the very beginner to the to the experts i don't even call myself an expert i'm still learning just like you all right have a lovely rest of your evening happy painting bye guys